Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Marcus and I'm here with a special update with news this morning that Tesla has started installing Powerwall 3s. With those being installed, we're starting to see the new specs. I'm gonna go over those new specs, compare them to the Powerwall 2s, and a special update here is I'm actually going to do a load test on our Powerwall system here just to show you how awesome this new upgrade is for the Powerwall 3s. Stay tuned, we're gonna go over it all shortly. We'll start off here by looking at the spec sheets for Powerwall 2 and the Powerwall Plus, and then look over the uh, basic info on the Powerwall 3 that we have available and compare the two to see what the updates are. Now to start off our system here, we have one Powerwall 2, which is basically a Powerwall without the inverter. Uh, and then we also have two Powerwall Pluses, one with a 7.6 kilowatt inverter, the other with a 3.8 kilowatt inverter. Um, now between the Powerwall 2 and the Powerwall 3s, the very important thing to note here is that the storage capacity has not changed 13 and a half kilowatt hours per power wall so for us we have three power walls 40 and a half kilowatt hours of usable storage capacity this doesn't change with the power wall 3 13 and a half kilowatt hours of storage capacity per power wall now i believe the battery chemistry may have changed so we may see a different energy density there the cost may decrease but we don't know these details yet tesla hasn't released that information we'll go over that in a little bit as soon as we find it out the second important thing to look at here when we're looking at the technical specs is the on-grid versus the backup power. And I'm gonna look at the sheet here because this is confusing. The Powerwall Plus with the inverter has two different values. On-grid, full sun is 7.6 kilovolt amperes in full sun, KVA for short, or 5.8 KVA in no sun continuously. Now KVA is kilovolt ampere, which is a measure of apparent power. Now there are three types of power here when you look at this, it's gonna be apparent, real and reactive power. Now I am not an electrician and I will repeat this a little bit later, I'm not an electrician. So this is just a dumbed down version of how I understand this. Let's see if you like how I explain it. The way you can kind of think of it is, is a wheelbarrow. Now when moving a wheelbarrow, you move forward, which is real power. But to do that, you have to lift the wheelbarrow up and down, which is reactive power. Now reactive power looks like it doesn't really accomplish anything because the wheelbarrow ends up still on the ground after going up and down. But basically, apparent power is both reactive and real power, which is the total voltage and current that the power company needs to provide your site. And then this also deals with power factors, which is for AC loads only. These can be capacitive um, or inductive loads. Inductive loads would be something like motors, fluorescent lightings, HVAC, or refrigeration. And basically you take that apparent power and you multiply that by a power factor and that gives you your kilowatts. And hopefully that wasn't confusing. It can get really complicated here, so I hope that was uh, you know, basic enough to understand and we'll move on from there. Now for now, we only have a picture of the specs that are on the side of the Powerwall 3. I'm sure we'll get more details as time goes on here, but what you can notice here and what's important is that the max continuous output has increased significantly. On our Powerwall 2s, as I showed you before, that was only about 5 kVA, 5.8 kVA, um, up to 11.5 kVA here, which is gonna work out to about 10 and a half to 11 kilowatt here. So that's almost doubled the, I think it actually has doubled the output on the power walls here. That is really amazing. Now, like I said before here, also notice that the 13 and a half kilowatt hours has not changed. And kind of interesting too, 286 pounds, 130 kilos for one of these power walls. They are chunky boys. Basically, long story short, we'd expect our power wall two to export five kilowatt continuous um, or seven kilowatt for 10 seconds at peak while it's either off grid or in backup mode, five kilowatt for short. Uh, the Powerwall Pluses should export about seven kilowatt in full sun or five kilowatt in no sun conditions uh, while on grid. So if we add our three power walls up here, we're getting five plus seven plus seven or 19 kilowatts of continuous power that uh, we can output here. And this is really where the power wall three is getting updated or upgraded really shines because now they can handle 11.5 kVA, essentially taking the power wall two and our power wall plus in terms of output and combining the two into one. So you're 
essentially getting rid of a power wall in terms of what you can send back. If we had three of these power walls in our system right now, instead of being able to send back 19 kilowatt, we'd be able to send back 34.5 kilowatt hours. Now that's pretty much the max of a 200 amp panel. I wanna say 36 or 37 kilowatt is about 160 amps there. So I can't really imagine that anybody is going to be drawing that much continuously, but that just goes to show you what an upgrade that output uh, being increased for the Powerwall 3s is. Um, so basically, here's the test. Ever since I got one of these systems, I've wanted to see what the max output would be. So I wanted to hook everything up, plug everything in, and see what would happen. Before we get into the fun stuff, we'll go over some of the basics here. We have a 200 amp main panel. We have a 100 amp sub panel in a garage and we use that to charge our two EVs and it runs our laundry off of that. Um, so that being said, continuous loads, 80% of your house should be 160 amps max, about 38.4 kilowatt when I actually do the math. Um, in our house, these are the things that I turned on. I did the Model Y, it's 16 amps. It's hooked up to a 1030 outlet. Now I ramped that down a little bit because we also have the Model 3 on a 1450 outlet, which is drawing 32 amps, and a dryer on a 30 amp uh, outlet or circuit. So basically we've got 72 amps of draw on that sub panel or 17 kilowatt hour, uh, kilowatts. So um, inside I turned on the toaster, the microwave, the dishwasher, the hair dryer, and the air conditioning, totaling about 24 kilowatt at peak with everything on. Now you can see the loads are increasing and increasing and the system's handling it just fine. We were about nine kilowatt or so of solar production here. So the power walls themselves only had to uh, supply about 12 kilowatt to make up the difference. And the interesting part is remember when I mentioned that they should be able to support 19 or 20 kilowatt continuously. Here we're starting to get over that to the 21, 22, 23 kilowatt and then approaching 24. And according to their spec sheets, the power wall should only be able to handle this for about 10 seconds. So what happens is our system reaches its max at that 24 kilowatt uh, continuous peak output. Uh, what actually happens is that the system seeds itself to the grid. The grid is supplying five and a half kilowatt here. Um, and we can actually see once it's reached its max, it has a kind of surprising behavior. I thought it would just continue to maybe ramp down the load so it wasn't at that max output and continue on. But what actually happened is that the system topped out and it reset itself. It took the system about 75 seconds to reset. I counted that one out. Uh, during which the house was drawing anywhere between 22.8 to 25.9 kilowatt from the grid. Um, once the system restarted, it did start using the grid for a little, but then once uh, basically the loads were reduced again, uh, it started to use the power walls and then the solar panels again on its own. Now our system basically behaved how I expected it to during that test. I was a little bit surprised that it reset itself once we hit that max continuous level. I thought it would maybe ramp itself down and just continue on going, but we only use the grid for a minute or two, so not a big deal there. It just goes to show you what an upgrade the uh, Powerwall 3 output upgrade is to 11.5 kVA. Basically with three of those Powerwall 3s, you get around 30 to 33 kilowatt of peak continuous output, which is about a 50% upgrade from the 20 that we have here with three Powerwalls. So I think that that's gonna be awesome. I don't think you're ever really gonna need to use that much because that really is approaching 80% uh, continuous load on a 200 amp panel that most people have in their house. Don't really see that happening that often, but Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you like what you saw, please subscribe, like, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next time. Enjoy.